All right, my friends, it's Wednesday evening, and we're looking at Aaron tonight as the storm approaches the Carolina coast here. We've already got some decent wind picking up out towards Hatteras, really even down to the Grand Strand. Some of those winds will also pick up here into parts of Virginia, Maryland, into parts of the, even the Northeast as this storm continues to wrap up. If you notice the motion, look, we're starting to see a bit of a northeasterly turn, still a very healthy looking hurricane right around that center of circulation. You can see how everything is still blossoming up. A lot of good convection here, that air rushing into the center at the surface as it does. It's getting, it's rising up and then look what's happening aloft. Good evacuation, good outflow still from this storm. So still pretty healthy. However, I'll tell you, look at this dry air that's sort of getting entrained into this storm. That is uh, weakening it a little bit and it will continue to weaken as it becomes more extra tropical and loses those tropical characteristics. Take a look at the latest roundup here. Some of the live conditions. Again, out towards Hatteras, we're starting to see gusts. Northeast wind at 8, gusting to 26 within the last hour. I think that was at 6 p.m. Eastern, so you may be watching this on playback. Hey, about half of you aren't subscribers. So, hey, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Travis. Used to be a chief meteorologist years ago. So a lot of new faces always showing up here on the channel. So if you've never seen me before, welcome to the channel. Hope you'll come back and uh, watch the videos and subscribe, especially as we head into winter. I'll link down below to why I think this winter could be a lot different than last year. Let's get back to the hurricane. Let's get back to where this thing is headed because it's going to move to the north and there's going to be a lot of problems along the coast. We're already seeing that uh, in the form of coastal flood uh, problems. We're also seeing some rip current risk too here with pretty much problems from Cape, uh, well, I would say really from Cape Cod all the way down to Florida. Also, even into parts of Maine, we're going to see some moderate rip tides here and rip currents going on. Storm surge is going to get pretty high right here from Cape Lookout up to Duck along the Outer Banks, two to four feet. Still looking at surge all the way down into South Carolina, one to three feet. And the lower Chesapeake Bay from Norfolk, you get up into the peninsula here. Yeah, there's going to be some issues with some high water. And then that also includes all the way up to Sandy Hook. So storm surge up to three feet possible. Uh, and especially at high tide, that could be an issue heading into the evening hours. Here's a look at the forecast. We'll walk it out ahead in time. I'll show you the conditions we can expect, not just here with Aaron, but also we'll take a look at the rest of the country too in the video. Quite a bit of rain still falling here into parts of the Northeast. Aaron's going to continue to batter the Outer Banks with some heavy wind, some rain too through the overnight. But look how quickly the storm moves off to the North and East. That eye also getting bigger. So as the storm moves North, it's growing in size. That's typical with these uh, storms as they move into the mid latitudes. And as we move into the evening hours, we'll start to see that lift even further to the northeast on Thursday. Some rain possible, though. Uh, some of the outer bands might influence places like Nantucket, possibly up towards Boston. But you can see the clear center of circulation way to the south. So that is some good news. This could have been horrible. Can you imagine if we were looking at this storm, say, 300 miles to the west, just pounding up into the Chesapeake? Could have been a really bad situation. Thankfully, tonight, we're looking at a much different story. We're going to look ahead, too, because there's more chances for storms in the coming days and maybe another hurricane. I'll show you where that's headed. As this moves away, uh, things do start to dry out. We start to see cooler conditions move in. However, more rain across the south as we head into Friday. It could be heavy at times. A lot of convergence happening here across the deep south. That could mean some heavy rain in the coming days. Now, let's take you beyond this. I'll take you into the long range. We'll head not just through this weekend, but maybe into next week too. Here goes Aaron. It's getting picked up by this trough that's moving through parts of the northeast now. That's going to suck the storm up, and then it's going to move really rapidly off to the northeast. A pretty strong ridge of high pressure is going to keep temperatures way above average across the southwest, but there are some big changes on the way as we head into the weekend, at least for some areas. First, we'll start to feel it across the upper Midwest with this cool air punching into the south. And look where your flow is coming in from the northwest. So temperatures will be on the way down. If you're tired of the heat, you got to love this type of forecast, right? As we head into Sunday and then into Monday of next week. So temperatures dropping below average for a change here all the way into the deep south. So I think numbers on the way down. This also will likely protect a lot of the East Coast as we head into the early part of next week for what's forming out in the Atlantic right now. Let's pop over to, well, let me show you one more map too. Look at these departures from averages as we head into the first part of next week. We could be a good 10 to maybe 15 degrees below average in some places. A big difference from what you're looking at right now. Again, we're watching Aaron right now. Um, and let's look at the, uh, 
Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the at the longer range outlook too. I know we're looking at the wind speeds, but I do want to touch on that in just a second with Aaron and some of those coastal impacts. But there goes the storm there. This is the operational, and this is the European Ensemble guidance. This is the AI version. Again, I showed you that trough that's moving here into the east, right? That's going to keep things quite cool. That likely will also pick up our next piece of energy and not really allow it to move very close to the U.S. National Hurricane Center is watching this piece of energy for some development in the coming days. That's some good news. I'm going to caution you to, to watch things after this period now. Surface high pressure building in uh, here into the southeast as we head into Wednesday and Thursday of the following week. And now with this type of setup, you've got to watch something here into the Caribbean that could develop. This could be a window, a time frame that needs watched. Does something develop here and move north? You can see some of the ensemble guidance trying to show something toward the end of the month and the 1st of September. It, this is a long way out still. Not, uh, and you're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, six members of the 50 are developing some kind of hurricane. So it's, it's still a stretch at this point. So something worth watching anyway in the coming days. All right, let's talk about the wind field overnight. We're already seeing those gusts. If you're just tuning in, you can take it back from the beginning. But we were looking at some of those wind gusts that we're already seeing uh, with with Aaron starting to impact parts of North Carolina. So as we head through the evening hours, those winds will pick up along the Outer Banks. Coastal flood warnings in effect. We're going to see some storm surge too. Again, two, three, four feet of, of storm surge, maybe even a little bit more. And those winds are really going to pick up, especially here along the Outer Banks. Winds could go 50 to 60 miles an hour, at least the wind gust. And then as we head to the north of that, Places like Elizabeth City, a little bit protected here, but still gusty, 20 to 30 at times, and winds fall off pretty quickly the further west you go. Again, the Outer Banks, it would not shock me if we see some hurricane gusts in the last hour. We've seen gusts up to 25, close to 30 at times, and that's just going to go up as we head through the overnight. By tomorrow morning, the wind's really picking up from Norfolk into the Chesapeake Bay, and it's funneling that water, too, right up into the bay. So there could be some flooding here in those low-lying areas, some coastal flooding. Storm surge forecast somewhere between one up to three feet. Some areas could see close to four feet, and that could cause some issues. There's also going to be some really big waves, regardless of how close the storm comes. So the eastern shore of Virginia, anywhere in North and South Carolina, again, up and down the eastern seaboard. And then as we head into Thursday morning toward the midday, we really start to pick the winds up along the Jersey Shore. So now we're looking at gusts up to 20, 30 miles an hour at times. Uh, the green is anything over 34. So you can see gusts possible 34 to 40 right along the coast you get inland those gusts 20 to 30 so either way it's going to be breezy even away from this hurricane you're going to know that there's a storm that's close by if you're anywhere along the i-95 corridor get west of i-95 things start to drop off but even back here we're looking at wind gusts 20 to 30 further to the north let's look at the winds here Still looking on track for some gusty conditions, especially right here along Long Island. You get up towards Block Island here and then out towards Nantucket, the winds will start to pick up. We could see gusts 30 to 40 at times, but the strong winds do stay offshore. Those tropical storm force winds will get very close, and it wouldn't shock me to see a gust or two that approach tropical storm force, especially for those places like Block Island, some of the uh, areas that are really exposed here along Long Island, and then out towards Nantucket and Cape Cod as we head through Friday, and then everything starts to push off to the south and east. Again, once we get beyond this time frame, you know, things, at in my mind, we get into September, things could get really active, and we could see a, a pretty decent time once I think we get towards the 1st of September with things starting to settle down, at least here in the tropics. However, the operational European wants to do something funky. I'm going to take you back to last year, and I don't like this time of year because you get these upper lows. If you get something developing tropical here, remember what Helene did last year? You had this upper low here, and it yanked the storm in like this. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, okay? First of all, I don't know if there's going to be a storm on September 2nd, and if someone tells you they do, no way. But you always are going to be dealing with these types of weather features that can cause problems with how these hurricanes track. Something to keep an eye on. It's something I'm going to be watching in the coming days. So if that sounds interesting... Again, subscribe. Okay. If you're interested in winter weather, it shocked me, guys. I took a poll. I couldn't believe it on the channel. Like 74% of you are big winter weather fans. I thought there would be a whole lot more people that just absolutely hate winter. And someone wrote in the comments. It was great. It was funny. They said that, uh, what was it? Those of you who are uh, maybe wishing for colder weather or big winter storms, maybe you don't see snow on the ground from, what was it, October to April or something. 
Anyway, I'll link that video down below. Uh, if you're on the live stream, that's coming up. You can head over to the channel and check it out. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Stay safe out there.